Hello and welcome to another Spruce and Bruise unboxing. Today we're looking at an absolutely massive stack of brand new Stormcast Eternals kits for Warhammer Age of Sigmar. So first of all I want to say a massive thanks to Games Workshop for sending these over to have a look at on the site. In this video we're going to have you having a look at all the kits, seeing how they go together, building them up and at the end of the video we'll have these all assembled and painted to see what they look like in the flesh. But yeah, today the brand new Stormcast Eternals Battle Tome is out and a whole host of kits alongside it. Uh, massive thanks to Games Workshop for sending these all over to us to check out. It's... Um, there's a lot of plastic here on this table right now, and I'm really excited to build these. I really enjoyed doing the um, the, the Stormcast out of the um, Skaventide box, and I've been eager to kind of add to them. Um, Hammer Sigmar I had since, you know, Age of Sigmar first came out, so they will be in the classic kind of gold colour scheme as well. And yeah, there's some really, really fun bits here. Now, there are a couple of older kits in this wave, the Liberators are getting uh, boxed individually from the uh, Skaventide box, as are the Prosecutors. We will have a look at the kits in this video, just because we've seen these before. Um, I do have painted models though that will show at the end of the video. But yeah, other than that there's a lot of stuff here, so where to start? I think we'll start with the little characters first and work our way up to the, uh, the big stuff. So, if we move these out of the way. And we'll have a look at the Lord Terminos first. Now obviously we get one of these in the Skaventide box. This is a different sculpt and looks really, really nice. Looks like it's got a couple of different head options as well. So if we pop this open and have a look what comes inside. So it is a single sprue. And yeah, that is very, very cool. The Lord Terminos is one of my favourite models out of the... Um, the Skaventide box, so I'm interested to see what this one looks like built up. Uh, and whether there's going to be any call for having multiple Lord Terminosas as well. I mean, maybe if you have multiple units of reclusions, might be handy having a couple to um, to kind of go in with them. But yeah, really, really nice kit. I'll have a quick look at the, uh, the instructions before we move on to the other kits. It's doesn't seem to have many parts, so I think it's going to be quite simple to go together. I do believe it's got quite a few um, different sub-builds on it though. So we can see here, you can actually build it with the axe or with a sword. Both of which look pretty cool, and again, if you have got multiple Lord Terminosas in your army, this helps add a little bit of variety to that as well. And again, a couple of different heads too. So you could have one with the sword, one with the axe, and both have different heads on them to uh, to make them look different as well. At the end of the video as well, um, we will go through the profiles of these, uh, any of the new models in the new Battle Tome as well. So yeah, so that's the Lord Terminos. We've also got a new Lord Relictor as well. So again, it's been a while since we've had one. This is a brand new one getting released alongside the book. And again, it does look very, very nice. Really, really cool kit. A um, couple of different head options on this one too. So if we pop this open and have a look. Now, it looks a much smaller kit than the uh, the previous one. There's not many parts at all on this one. But it looks very nice. Yeah. I'm looking forward this to building this one up. I don't know if I even got a Lord Relictor in my collection. I think there was one in the original um, Age of Sigmar box, wasn't there? Yeah, let's have a look how he goes together. So again, quite a simple build. Don't think that's going to be too difficult to anyone to build. Obviously there's a lot less customization than on the other one. Just really the different head options that we've got there. But yeah, really, really nice model. I'm looking forward to painting this one up and uh, seeing what this looks like in the flesh. So that is the Lord Relictor. We also have a new Lord Celestin as well. Now of all the models, this one, I wasn't quite sure on the posing of it. I thought it looked a bit kind of twisted maybe. So I'm interested in seeing how this looks in the flesh to see if maybe just the, the camera angle perhaps. And again, you've got quite a few different weapon options on this one too. Um, from shield, a big grand hammer, 
or a hammer and sword, all of which look pretty cool. So again, if we pop this open and have a look at what we get. So, again, another really nice sprue filled with bits. This one potentially, with there being some spare, you know, weapon parts and heads and stuff, there's some potential fodder here for doing any conversions as well. Especially with the new Anvil of Apotheosis that's in the new Battle Tomes 2. Essentially that lets you create your own custom character with, you know, guidelines and rules on how to create that, but that's something we're definitely going to be doing here on the team as part of Path to Glory. So, if we have a look at the instructions, so far so straightforward. Again, doesn't look like there's a massive amount of parts on this one. Most of the options here are going to be how you put it together, which kind of load out. And to be fair, they're all really nice. So, um, yeah, it's going to be hard to pick which one. They're quite like the big, the big grand hammer. I think that's quite nice. I don't know if there's any rules differences at the time of filming this. I haven't read the new uh, Battle Tome yet. So, uh, like I say, at the end of the video, we'll have read through that and be able to list any kind of rules changes. And we get quite a few heads here too, which is nice. So yeah, she looks pretty cool. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to painting this one up as well and seeing what it looks like in person. So yeah, very, very cool. So that is the three new character models, kind of small character models coming out alongside this. We do have another couple characters in there. Uh, one of which is the new Taurus the Redeemed. Now this can also build up a, uh, a Knight Azeroth, which you'll remember from um, earlier Age of Sigmar kits. We did have a previous kit for this one. This looks absolutely gorgeous compared to that one though. Uh, and I'll definitely be looking to pick up another one of these boxes to build as the other one. The first one I'll probably build as the, the named character, just because he looks cool and I love the uh, the yellow wings and everything. But yeah, I think another one will definitely be in order to build the other variants, and that's something that we'll see on one of the other kits later on as well. So if we crack this open and have a look, and you know what, it's a similar similar sprue layout really to the previous Knight of Jross. Um The wings are in one piece, which is nice, so there's no difficult assembly with them. It looks like it's just snip them out and stick them on the back, which is going to be great for sub-assemblies as well. You could potentially leave that as just a single piece, mount it to a bit of um, a cork or something to get kind of paint in those wings a little bit easier than having it attached to the model itself. But yeah, these are, these are really, really cool models. I'm looking forward to... Uh, to seeing what else we've got in store. Again, we'll have a quick look at the book. I don't think there's much between the two variants. I think it's just a weapon and a, um, a head swap. Again, we've got them both here. Looks like, again, yeah, majority of the build is exactly the same. It's just the arm and the head. So yeah, I think I'm gonna go for that one initially because it looks cool. Um, yeah, that's pretty ace. So Taunus the Redeemed. Again, looks like it's a fairly simple build and you've still got a couple of different head options too. And you can equally build this one with either weapon as well, so... Yeah. You could easily have that counting as either. For the name character, obviously it's that specific head that you use. But yeah, there's there's not a lot of, I don't think it actually matters which weapon you do on there. So you could easily have this counting as either. I think it's gonna be more the coloration and stuff to show off it being the, the kind of the name character. Again, looking at the back, it seems like it's just the one weapon profile too. So I don't think it matters which weapon you give this one. So yeah, that's, uh, that's fun. Another fun kit that we've got are the new reclusions as well. So obviously we got reclusions in the uh, Skaven Tide box. This is a brand new multi-part kit though. Um, I do know, I did sneak a look at the, uh, the Battle Tome and while this has got two different weapon options on the artwork and on the box, from a rules point of view, does not actually matter what you give them. These kind of two-handed weapons look 
Very, very cool though. So this second set of reclusions I'm going to build with them uh, just because I think they look nicer than the standard weapons and obviously I've got a unit of them from um, Skaventide too. So yeah, let's have a look at these ones. So yeah, they've, they've certainly put a lot of cool kits out for the Stormcast and the Skaven. And it's nice to see um, the system get a lot of love with the new edition. I think it's been very popular. And I know a lot of people are keen to uh, expand on their army. So yeah, it's nice to be able to uh, put together a different force. And yeah, those two-handed weapons look so, so good. I think that's my favourite part of the kit. Again... They are very similar to the ones um, in the, the Skaven Tide box, but obviously these are kind of different poses and different builds. So if you've got like a couple of units in your army, you could probably do three different units, two boxes of these and a unit of the Skaven Tide ones and have them all look different. And there is a, um, a sub-faction within the book that does kind of lean into that side of things as well. So I might dabble with that myself. But yeah, they look very nice. We'll have a quick look at the instructions again, as ever, before we uh, we jump on. So the reclusions. Again, you've got you've got quite a few weapon options, really. You can give them two hand weapons, hand weapon and shield, or the um, the, the double-handed mace thing. Like I say, from a rules point of view, it doesn't matter which one you put on, but um, yeah, they're cool. A couple of different shoulder options too, which is nice. Now again, this might be another kit that's easy to keep them separate or not attach them to the bases because what you'll find if you stick them to the bases sometimes it's difficult to get to that um, cloak underneath it to get your brush in so I'd probably um, not attach them properly to the bases just use a bit of blue tack or something and then when you come to painting the inside of the cloak you can get to it a lot easier then that's probably what I'll be doing with these but yeah they do look very very nice so that is the reclusions we're rattling through these now, and next up is the Storm Strike Palador. So this is the new like fast cavalry for the Stormcast Eternals again. Really, really nice new kits, and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to painting these ones up. They look a lot of fun. So let's crack these open. And yeah, I'm hoping to have. I see there's a lot of plastic here in front of us, and I've got a couple of weeks to get them together. I'm hoping to get at least some of these built, well, hopefully all built, and some of these painted in time for the uh, the NDA to drop. These are one of the units I'd like to get some paint on. If I can, if I can get some paint on one model from each unit or something, maybe, just so I can show what they look like. But that banner is really, really cool. These are ace models. I'm a big fan of the Stormcast Eternals, and uh, yeah, these are very nice new kit. Obviously it's across three kind of largest sprues, and the, the mount itself is quite hefty. So I think these are going to look quite impressive when they're uh, built and painted. Yeah, they're very nice. And the final part of that kit. Again mount looking really good and it looks like again there's quite a few different optional parts as well so as we look into the instructions we just see kind of what variety we've got here it looks like we do have a few variations if only in the weapons and the heads again I do like this little staff on this one you can build it as a champion as well yeah these are really cool these are probably the most complex kit we've had out of the ones we've shown off so far today and they've got quite a few different parts. I really like the lances as well. Yeah, this is another unit where you could have a couple of boxes of these and have them all look different. Unit of six maybe with some of those lances in there too. I think that'd be very cool. Yeah. Yeah, definitely favour the lances here. But um, if you're building a unit of three, you're probably going to want the banner. And the horn blower as well, plus the champion, so I'm probably going to end up picking up another box of these. So we've got three with lancers as well for a nice little kind of cavalry charge deep into enemy lines. They do look very nice in that scheme as well. I'm obviously going to do mine in the classic gold and blue. But yeah, they are uh, they're very fun indeed. 
So that is the Storm Strike Paladors. That leaves with just two new kits. One of the bigger ones here is the Storm Reach Portal. So this is a brand new scenery kit for the Stormcaster Turtles that basically lets your troops kind of teleport through it elsewhere onto the battlefield. Looks a really nice big piece as well, so interested to see how this stacks up um, kind of in person. So yeah, let's uh, crack this one open and have a look what is inside. So again, this is one of the bigger boxes that we've got. Though the kit itself looks like it's made up of a couple of duplicated sprues. This is something I've done with a lot of scenery kits. The kind of saves, each unique sprue has kind of got a cost to make. So if you can duplicate sprues to make like a symmetrical design, that's really easy to do together. It makes it kind of easier to do as a kit. And that's something they've done here. And it looks like there's a lot of nice detail on it. I think it was, looking at it, I think it will stand a little bit smaller than I imagined, but I suppose just the, the portal bit itself, which takes up the bulk of the thing, is, you know, it's gonna stand quite tall compared to a storm cast. So yeah, there's some really nice texture to paint on this as well. Yeah, I think this is gonna be a fun one. I'm quite looking forward to, um, to getting some paint on this one and getting it together. You know, obviously, for, for Age of Sigmar scenery, this is potentially a nice one to just have on the battlefield too. There's a nice kind of impassable terrain piece. So you get two identical frames like that. We'll have a quick look at the instructions and see if there's anything unusual, but I'm not expecting this one to be a terribly difficult build. Um, so we've got the main structure. It's put together using those, um, those pieces there. And there's a nice little guidance here to show how it goes together. So it looks like it's actually kind of like, um, kind of long, I thought it was kind of uh, round when I first looked at it, but it's more, um, kind of elongated in the middle. Again, building the kind of steps that it goes on. And then that piece just goes on top of it. So it looks like it should be a fairly quick build, really. And then finally you put the, the lid on it and the uh, the little kind of like, I guess, Sigma icon on the top. And it looks like we do have some customization options as well. There's a few different kind of like face plates that can go onto it with some different designs. Yeah, I really like that. I think that's gonna be uh, some good fun to work on. So that is the Stormreach portal, a new scenery piece for the Stormcast. And we've just got one new kit to look at, and it's a biggie. It is Iridan the Witness, who is a brand new character for the Stormcast Eternals on a, a Morgrith, I think it's called. Really, really nice, does have an ultimate build as well. Um, as a Lord Vigilant on a Morgriff. Again, also really nice sculpt. And they've done a similar trick to Crundus and Karazai, where the head can be built in two different ways, which when you've got both on the table, give, it makes them look a bit more kind of individual and not so much cookie cutter. So yeah, I, again, I'm gonna have to pick up another kit to build as, as that one as well. This one I will build up as the name character, because again, they look really cool. But yeah, let's uh, crack this open and have a look at what is inside here. So, again, we get a big frame of little things on the biggest base in the world. That's on like a, a chariot sized base. Let's have a look. So, yeah, very, very nice kit though. I love the detail of this Morgriff. It's um, I'm kind of a bit sad we've not had like a caster on a dragon, because I think that'd be cool. But I believe this character is a priest, maybe? And again, this will go nicely with those other griff creatures that we've uh, got earlier as well, the Paladors. So yeah, very, very cool. And then the wings of it as well. So yeah, I don't think it's quite as big as I imagined it'd be. Again, at the end of the video, I'll do a bit of a size comparison compared to some other kits. But it does look very nice. And again, there's some nice detail on there too. So yeah, very much looking forward to getting this one built and painted as well. Uh, before we jump to the future and have a look at the models and talk about their rules, we'll have a quick look at the instructions here. Again, you can build it as one of the two kind of variants. Most of them look, it's exactly the same build, just kind of 
swapping out the head and the rider in order to differentiate between them. So you do build that main kind of like body assembly first and then basically the head's one way in one model and the other way on the other. There may be scope for making this modular, but honestly, I'm just gonna build both of them. I, I like the model, so I'm gonna pick up both. I think it'd be really nice. Looks like the wings might be in a slightly different pose depending on which one that you build as well. Yeah, very, very nice. Again, you might be some scope for having this one as a modular assembly as well, in order to uh, make it easier to paint. But yeah, these are really fun. I'm very much looking forward to uh, to working on that one. So yeah, let's look at the new Stormcast kits. We'll have a look at the assembled and painted models now. So let's take a look at the finished models. Now I managed to get a couple of these painted. They're all built, so we'll have a look at all the kits. But let's check out the, the couple of painted ones I've done first. So first of all, this guy was so much fun to work on. Now I didn't realise at the time, but he's actually push fit. Well, there's limited options really to change in between the uh, the named character version and the um, kind of generic version. It is really just a different head and a different weapon that differentiates the two of them. So I would recommend kind of painting him in the box art if you want to miss the character, just so you can differentiate the two of them on the battlefield. But yeah, this was a really really nice model. Obviously, I've gone for the uh, the box art scheme here. Copied the yellow wings and the the silver armor. But yeah, really happy with how he turned out. Now the real star of the show though is this guy on his Morgriff. Such a nice model and was so much fun painting him up. I'm going to have to pick another one of these to build as the, uh, the generic one. I built him as the named character and he's got quite a lot of detail on him. The Griff, uh, the Morgriff as well. Really, really gorgeous looking kit. One of the best um, monster mounts I think we've seen for a long time. Stunkers have got some cool dragons, but now they've got some cool griffiny things to go with it. And I, uh, I really hope we see more stuff like this. Uh, in the full um, battle zone, we do have a full review over on spruceandbrews.com at the minute. You can actually use this as a mount for your um, Anvil of Apotheosis characters as well. So if you did want to put a mage on one, you can by using that, which is a nice touch. But yeah, this is this is probably my favourite model from the release. And I very much enjoyed painting it up. So let's look at some of the other kits that came out with it. These aren't uh, painted yet, but I have managed to build them up. So we've got the new Lord Terminos. Again, similar style to the old one. I've given him a sword rather than the other one had a hammer or an axe or something. Again, similar design to that, and does come with a Memorian as well, like the other ones did. Again, they're similar in design to the old ones, um, alongside them. So we've got these guys as well. Now, interestingly, they do have a number of different weapon options on the reclusions. So, um, I think it's sword and shield, two, two close combat weapons, or a two-handed kind of mace thing that they've got here. From a rules point of view, they don't do anything, uh, they're all the same, which is a shame, but it does mean that you can just build whichever looks cooler, so, you know, that is a, a positive there. Obviously we've got the three different models in the box there. They did go together really quickly. These are just sprayed gold for now, I need to uh, go back and add some detail. And they come with a pair of Memorians as well, which are very, very nice. We do also have uh, the two individual characters as well. So these don't have any new rules in the book or anything. Uh, but some of these models, you know, or the, the units haven't been available for quite some time. Uh, again, really nice take on the classic model. So yeah, some nice detail on there as well. So really happy with this guy. And then the um, Lord Celestin. I wasn't too keen on the uh, the pose on the box art. There's actually quite a few different ways of building it, and I quite enjoyed building it with the hammer. I think it looks a lot better than the the pose they've gone for the box art. So yeah, again, another nice model. Now one of the surprise kits was the uh, the Paladors. So these are a fast cavalry unit. 
Uh, they're anti-infantry and tree and get extra damage on the charge. Base they're only rend 1 damage 1, but obviously on the charge against infantry they're rend 2 damage 2, making them a little bit more reliable. If a warrior um, chamber unit has died in the battle, they also get to reroll their charges and get strikes first as well. Obviously that's a bit conditional, you know, you need some of your units to be dead in order for that to trigger. But they're still a really nice unit, so again there's three different scopes here. You can build them all with lances as well, which is nice. I'm looking forward to painting these up. I'm going to do them in a very similar scheme to the Morgriff, kind of darker colours and kind of like leather harnesses and the like, just to kind of tie them together. Because I'm going to uh, kind of have everything looking kind of similar to them, similar kind of vibe. These are Stormcats that have been reforged multiple times, just to kind of lean into that aesthetic. And then finally, we have the big scenery piece. Now this one, again, was a bit of a surprise. Let me just zoom the camera out a little bit because it's too big there. So yeah, this was a, um, a surprise because we've not had a scenery piece for the Stormcast before. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a big chunky piece. If we get, I don't know, the Lord Celestin to show as a comparison of size, it's a massive piece. Now this is 50 quid, so it's a big scenery kit. And it went together really nicely with just two different sprues that put it together. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. I think it, um, it's going to be a fun one to paint. Now, obviously with all the uh, the miniatures to work on, it's uh, I've not had time to get everything painted up and I wanted to focus on the two named characters because I think they are my favourite models from the release. But this is kind of third on the list. I want to get that painted up soon. Um, from a rules mechanic, basically if you can pick one Stormcast unit within six inches of it and then you can remove them from the battlefield and place them anywhere on the battlefield outside of nine inches of the enemy. So yeah, pretty cool. Um, obviously you need to be near it in order to use it, and you can only send one unit per turn through it, but still pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, some really, really nice models there for the Stormcast range. Now over on the site, spruceandbrews.com, we do have a full detailed written review of the new Stormcast Eternals Battle Tome as well. Um, so yeah, check that out. We, we kind of go into the, the unit profiles, what they do, what's changed, and yeah, kind of the full lowdown on the book. I'm looking forward to playing them. Uh, spoilers, there's not many, well, there's no changes rules mechanic wise from the uh, the index lists. But obviously, all the profiles for the new units in there, and you get some cool armies of renown in there too, along with some regiments of renown that you can take in other order armies. So yeah, some nice fun stuff. Favourite part in there is the, uh, the Path to Glory Anvil of Apotheosis stuff. So if you are interested in that kind of thing, uh, definitely dive into the review because we go into it in some detail on there. But yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, why not give us a follow? We do lots of unboxings and Warhammer content. Like I say, we've also got all the uh, the kind of written counterpart articles over on spruceandbrews.com. We've recently put a post up with the contents and the values of the Christmas Battle Force bundles as well. So head over to the site if you are interested in that. Um, and if you would like to support the site as well, we do have an affiliate link to Element Games in the description. If you use that, we get a bit of a kickback, which goes towards helping to run the site. So anything you do get through there is massively appreciated. And if you have enjoyed it, like the video, tell your friends, send them the link, all that cool stuff kind of really helps with the engagement and getting more people to, uh, to watch these videos. But yeah, until next time, have a great weekend, and we'll see you soon.